Greetings in Christ. I'm Pastor John Fritz of Hope Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Aurora, Illinois, and I'd like to welcome you to our worship service for this, the fourth Sunday in Lent, in the year of our Lord, 2023. The theme for our service and our sermon this morning is Seeing Jesus, Only the Bible Gives Us the Whole Picture. We begin our worship by imploring the Lord in song, to open the eyes of our hearts. Greetings in Christ. I'm Pastor John Fritz of Hope Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Aurora, Illinois, and I'd like to welcome you to our worship service for this, the fourth Sunday in Lent, in the year of our Lord, 2023. The theme for our service and our sermon this morning is Seeing Jesus, Only the Bible, gives us the whole picture. We begin our worship by imploring the Lord in song to open the eyes of our hearts. is Psalm 142, a maskell of David when he was in the cave. With my voice I cry out to the Lord, with my voice I plead for mercy to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him, I tell my trouble before him. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see, there is none who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Please follow along with me in prayer. Holy and merciful Father, you created me to live perfectly with you and to dwell with other people in complete harmony for all of life's days. All too often, however, I have fallen short of your holy will. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. I have broken all of your commandments. I have been quick to speak, slow to listen, and blinded by sin and the facades erected by fallen humanity. In baptism you have given me Christ, the light of the world, yet I am tempted to focus on darkness. For all of my sins of thought, word, and deed, I deserved your punishment, both now and for all eternity. Forgive me for Christ's sake, and refocus my vision upon your revelation of salvation, reality, morality, and life, through your pure and perfect word. Amen. God's word, the Bible, reveals how our Heavenly Father has forgiven all your sins for Christ's sake. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has fulfilled all righteousness and removed your guilt forever. Through the washing of regeneration and renewal, he has applied his righteousness to you, cleansed you of sin, and given you the new birth from above. You are his own dear child. Though in this life we still see through a glass darkly, the perfect light of his salvation shines brilliantly, revealed through his Holy Spirit, that we may see and know and understand his will, that all should repent and come to the knowledge of the truth. On the basis of your confession and with the command and by the promise of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We respond to God's absolution of our sins by singing, Behold our God.
hands, bearing all the guilt of sinful men. God eternal, humble to the grave, Jesus Savior, risen now to reign. Behold our God, seated on His throne, come let us adore Him. Behold our King, nothing can compare, come let us adore Him. The Old Testament lesson for today is Isaiah chapter 42, verses 14 through 21. For a long time I have held my peace. I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools. And I will lead the blind in a way so that they do not in a way that they do not know. In paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. They are turned back and utterly put to shame who trust in carved idols, who say to metal images, You are our gods. Hear, you deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as my dedicated one, or blind as the servant of the Lord? He sees many things, but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. The Lord was pleased for his righteousness' sake, to magnify his law and make it glorious. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them, for it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel lesson is John chapter 9. Verses 1 through 41. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, it is he. Others said, no, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. 
So the Pharisees again asked him how he received his sight. And he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called his parents who had received the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but how he now sees, we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Asked him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be the Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our sermon song this morning is Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Oh 
brothers and sisters in Christ. I urge you to recognize through the power of the Holy Spirit that seeing Jesus is something that is only possible when we look through the lens of Holy Scripture. Only the Bible gives us the full picture. As people have looked at the historical record of Jesus and even what is included in the Bible, most people in our culture would think of him as a desiccated set of dry bones, maybe that at one point was lunch for ravenous dogs after he was taken down from the cross. But certainly it is not our common experience that people who die or are executed 2,000 years ago are still alive and living. But Jesus, the light of the world, has a way to inform how we see him. And he is the word who has become flesh and dwelt among us, the word of God incarnate, has sent his Holy Spirit to lead men of faith to write both the Old and the New Testament so that every single word and every single book is faithful and true and perfectly reliable. So we as children of God, whose Holy Spirit invaded our hearts and our minds and opened our eyes of faith, opened the eyes of our hearts, as we sang earlier, can see Jesus not just as someone who died, but as the Savior of the world and the light of the world. And even though we see through a glass darkly, as St. Paul would say, we have the power of vision from the Holy Spirit to recognize Christ as Lord and Savior, to recognize his call to us as if we are with King David in the darkness of the cave, writing to the Lord and recognizing our absolute need for him. Or as Isaiah says, the spiritually blind who will pick anything other than the true God because that's the nature of our fallen sinful being that we're willing to look to anything for good our bank accounts, our government, whatever program we can devise to support and strengthen and encourage ourselves. We may even look to our own brilliance and our aptitudes and our giftedness. But Christ tells us that we are blind in our sin spiritually dead and we fumble around in the darkness and that only he is the true light of the world. In the gospel lesson we have the amazing story of the man who was born blind and for those of us who have heard and read scripture so often we're a little bit jaded to this fact that Jesus picked this one man who was born blind and healed him in a rather unusual way. He did the spitting and the making of mud and the applying of mud to the man's eyes. We know from the Dead Sea Scrolls that there's at least four different times that God's creative work back at the creation of mankind is referring to God using what we would consider an unusual source of water, that is divine spittle, mixing it and kneading it with the clay, which Adam actually means, earth or clay, and forming the first man. So we have Jesus using this, we would say, not at all antiseptic approach, except that when he who is perfectly clean 
applies himself to those who are unclean, they become perfectly clean. And in this case, it is not that the man born blind was a sinner any more than the rest of us who've inherited this mortal clay from Adam and Eve or his parents. But Jesus applies divine, holy water. And again, we don't suggest any of you try this with your friends, teenagers out there listening. But Christ uses a means of applying what we would not usually recognize as holy water with earth, a physical element. So he uses those two elements to recreate and perfect the vision of the man who is born blind. And he sends him off with a promise that he should go and wash in the pool of Siloam. Now there's a Jewish, I don't want to say superstition, but tradition that washing meant to cover every single pore of your body until they were all wet. And so we have an allusion here to being baptized into Christ's death, to having this holy water from Christ applied to him, to have recreation applied to his eyes, and he's given this word from Christ that he has to physically hear and respond to and obey, and so he goes to the pool where God sends him to wash in the manner that God sends him with the word of God connecting God's promise with another physical element, much nicer water than the spittle of the Son of Man. And he washes probably more than just his eyes, although that is conjecture, and even the extra-biblical source that we get from the Dead Sea Scrolls is not divinely inspired, so we can kind of weigh that in the balance. But we see this man who had been outcast by society, who had been a poor, miserable beggar. And we remember Martin Luther's last words, I am but a beggar in the presence of the Lord. This beggarly man who can't see has his eyes opened and he comes back and he gets grilled by those who have physical sight but spiritual blindness. And they ask repeatedly, who did this? How did it all happen? And the guy says, God does God things. I worship him, but I don't really know how God operates. And you and I, we see the events in our lives and we see the things in our lives through a glass darkly. So even as we read scripture, the devil is busily trying to twist it and we need to go again to our knees and ask the Holy Spirit to open the eyes of our heart so that even in God's pure and perfect word we can read it and trust it and obey it in its purity so that it doesn't get twisted or perverted or heretically manipulated by those who want to somehow lead us away from the truth. So as John 9 moves from verse 1 to verse 41, we have the blind man described as the blind man, and then we have him described as he who was blind, and then we have he who was blind but now sees, and we see the progression there. And contrasting with the words from Isaiah, where the promise of the coming messianic age is that the blind will see and the deaf will hear, we also have this section sadly ending with the 
leaders of the synagogue, the leaders of the Jews, whom God also wants to save. God is not willing that any be lost, but he wants all to repent and come to the knowledge of the truth. And one of the ways that he tries to reach them is with this messianic sign right before their noses. And they can physically see and he comes up to them and they grill them over and over again. And this enlightened, use that word intentionally, this enlightened layman shares with them, can anyone do such a sign if it's not from God? His parents throw the man who was blind, who was born blind, but now can see under the bus because they don't want to be kicked out of the synagogue. And so they tell the Jewish leaders, uh, he's of age, why don't you ask him himself? Because we don't want to get kicked out. And here, in contrast to what we heard last week with the Samaritan woman at the pool who hears the words of Jesus and the Holy Spirit immediately convicts her of her sin, multiple husbands, and she repents and is led to faith in Christ the Savior and Lord and to recognize him. At the end of this chapter we have the man who was blind, whom his neighbors can see but because he's no longer a beggar, they can't really recognize him as the same guy. That's almost like the Clark Kent disguise of just the horn rim glasses. But apparently, some of his neighbors didn't recognize him walking around and seeing. And the Pharisees sadly reject the man who was born blind and healed by the Messiah in fulfillment of God's Old Testament promises of a greater one than Moses who was to come and who was to fulfill the full law and wisdom and counsel of God on our behalf so that when we get tossed into the darkness of the cave, which should be our tomb, he who is the light of the world will one day burst in upon us with the brilliance of the glory of God's love for us in Christ Jesus. Raise our souls to heaven and on Judgment Day raise these mortal bodies and raise them and heal them perfectly so that we see perfectly and hear perfectly and get to rejoice perfectly body and soul, both perfectly renewed and fulfilled in the presence of God, all who have preceded us in the faith and all who will follow. As we see Jesus, we are empowered to do so fully and completely through the Word of God. Seeing Jesus is only possible because the Bible gives us the full and the complete picture. And it gives us that picture so that we can share it. The beauty of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus, our Lord, as revealed perfectly to us in his word. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which is beyond all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray, dear light of the world, you shone brilliantly in our hearts in the waters of baptism. Enlighten us through the power of your holy Bible to see the real you. Give us the desire and the strength to follow you in spite of whatever mirages, facades, and tempting images the devil, the world, and our fallen flesh lure us with. Aid those working for peace in Europe, Africa, and around the world. In your mercy, assist earthquake, famine, flood, and disaster victims around the world. According to your will, grant those we name in our hearts healing that you know to be best for them and their eternal welfare. Amen. 
Join me as we confess the faith that saves in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Our closing song is, I Look Not Back. <laughs>